been to Dalnavert Museum here in Winnipeg on Carlton Street, 61 Carlton Street. The holidays are the perfect time to go for your first visit because the house is transformed and so many events are happening over the holiday season. Um, Charlene uh, is my guest this afternoon at Van Buchenhout. Would let's be nice to give you your Hi. last name. Welcome to Classic 107. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. Um, so, okay, let's start from the very beginning. Um, for those people who've never been to Dalnavert Museum, what is it? It is a, a beautiful gem in the heart of downtown. It's a historic home um, built in 1895, so right at the uh, end of the Victorian era. So everything inside is a uh, from that period. It was the home of Sir Hugh John MacDonald and his family. Uh, Sir Hugh John MacDonald lived in Winnipeg. He's the son of the first Canadian Prime Minister. Uh, he was a lawyer and a police magistrate, and um, and his family lived there until in well into the into the 1900s. Wow. So when did it become a museum? It became a museum uh, in the 1970s. Uh, so it was a boarding house for a while. And then uh, in the 1970s, it got um, picked up and uh, uh, all the restoration happened and it turned into a museum. And then, um, a f- let's see, four years ago, um, it fell into the hands of uh, Friends of Dalnavert uh, Museum. At a time when it's so difficult to keep Uh, organizations like this going, museums in particular, what challenges do you guys face? Uh, Well, the one thing we like to try to do is to um, keep people coming in always. And uh, we are open all year round and um, we offer tours and uh, you can rent the space. But um, what we like to do is create programming that will uh, bring people in and revitalize uh, the home every day for, for families and for uh, Winnipeggers and um, for people visiting. So can you describe the house a little bit? Yes. Uh, so it's like stepping back in time. So you walk in and you walk straight into the summer kitchen and then uh, straight into the uh, the winter, the regular kitchen. And it's right through the back door where the servants would go in. And um, it's the smell of the space is will take you back, um, even though we were probably not all alive then. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's a beautiful smell to the house, and um, it, it immerses you right into that era. Uh, you walk into the rest of the house, and it's a beautiful example of, um, of a certain uh, class of family um, in Winnipeg in the early uh, part of the 1900s. Um, it, it really shows you what uh, what inventions and what technology that we had. Like there was electricity, um, whether it, it was very uh, light, but and they had a, a stove with an actual um, temperature gauge, which was very new. So we have all these new things that seem old to us, but... Um, we're state rem- of the art. Yeah, then. we're state of the art then. And I can imagine a lot of sitting rooms and yes, we have a bedrooms. gorgeous parlor, um, three bedrooms upstairs plus the two uh, servant rooms. There's a full attic. Um, there is a gorgeous uh, walk-in bathroom that you can uh, walk into, and it's uh, that's my favorite room. Um, but yeah, our study and our solarium actually gets a lot of play, and at Christmas time, our dining room really uh, sparkles. So uh, when you think of Christmas time. The Victorian era, it, they go in hand, hand in hand, right? Like, is that when you think of what a perfect Christmas of years gone by, that springs to mind. That's right. So what does the house look like now? Oh, wow. We do uh, Victorian Christmas very well. So the Victorians are credited with um, creating the Christmas that we have uh, today, that we celebrate today, uh, that we think of Christmas trees, Christmas crackers, uh, turkey, um, decorating trees, all that kind of stuff is all uh, from uh, the Victorian era. Uh, so we have a beautiful uh, fir tree in the parlor. It smells gorgeous right now. So if the only thing you do is come in the house and walk <laughs> into the parlor, please go in there and smell the tree. It's wonderful. It looks gorgeous this year. Our volunteers did a wonderful job decorating it. It looks beautiful. There are like brown uh, paper packages underneath the tree and nutcrackers and there's garland all over the house and the dining room table, like I said, sparkles. It's set for a full Christmas meal uh, with a little menu there and you can see uh, how people would have celebrated. Wow, I can only imagine. (laughs) Um, So you've got a a ton of events that happen over the holiday season with one coming up uh, this week. Should we start with that and then go from there? 
Yeah, so this week we have um, a live radio play of A Christmas Carol. So we have two things colliding. We have the uh, Victorian era, A Christmas Carol, Dickens, A Christmas Carol, colliding with the 1940s, which the house would have been a boarding house okay. uh, then, and um, and radio plays would have been very popular. And we put the two together, and we're doing um, a just a live reading with sound foley, so that's like sound effects going on. Um, that you can watch and see, which is very exciting, and um, and cr- commercial jingles because it's the 1940s, so they're going to push some fruitcake and things <laughs> like that, and uh, all these characters playing um, a, all the Dickens. There's uh, like 98 Dickens characters, and so they're going to be playing all of. There's about six actors going to be playing all of them, um, and it's really fun. And so how it's just the one performance? Just the one performance. You can come early and uh, see the house beforehand. Um, we have a couple of parlor games, too, that's part of the celebration. Uh, and then you go in uh, to the visitor center and uh, hear the uh, classic tale. And what else is happening at the house? So uh, Sundays in December, we have um, a special event for kids. And it's not kids only, um, but it's kids very... Kids from 1 to, it's one 90, to 99, 99, yeah, <laughs> and more. Um, we do actually get a lot of adults coming back uh, to uh, watch to watch it with their kids. It's a storytelling event. It's called A Child's Victorian Christmas Story, and it's with a really wonderful storyteller, Leanne Kaler. And um, she, this is her fourth year doing it. Um, she sits beside the tree, and the kids get to sit on the ground in front of the tree and in front of her. And um, this is really special because we don't let... We usually put up a barrier in the parlor and you can't really step too far into the room you just get to look um, but this time we take the barrier down and the kids get to go right up and experience Victorian Christmas wow. like right up near the tree and get um, a, an amazing storytelling experience it's um, it's so fun she keeps their focus and it's not very long it's very uh, tailored to kids um, and it's uh, very inexpensive it's only eight dollars um, per ticket and you get Christmas crafts in the attic beforehand so wow. it's a whole experience uh, you're right, Leanne is an uh, amazing, amazing uh, storyteller uh, for children. And if you want to see a picture of one of the storytelling sessions from years past, you can go to classic107.com and you can see Leanne sitting there in the chair right beside that beautiful tree with everyone uh, sitting around her. So Yeah, wonderful. it's really special. Anything else happening? Oh my goodness, yes. <laughs> we have more. Uh, so on top of the events, we have... Um, a Dickens uh, Christmas Village in display in our visitor center. So before uh, you tour the house, you can go and take a look at all the miniature uh, village uh, setup, which is very uh, cute. Our volunteers do a lot of work. It's not just very cute. It's very extravagant as well. Um, you can go tour the house. And then on, um, on the 13th and 14th of December, we continue our storytelling tradition with uh, ghosts for the holidays. And so the Victorians told ghost stories at Christmas time. And we when think, didn't they tell ghost stories? I know. <laughs> well, we think of Halloween, but really uh, Christmas yeah. time was the time because it was uh, it was all about family and friends and sharing the time together. And well, I think of a Christmas story. Uh, I mean, yeah, a Christmas Carol was or a, uh, Christmas Carol, is a me, ghost yeah. story. Yeah. yeah, there are three ghosts in yeah. there, and that's what Charles Dickens set out to write. And uh, because at the darkest time of the year, that's when you want to tell uh, your tales of spirits, um, spirits gone by to you as well. Uh, like if it's a uh, uh, family who's lost somebody, maybe right. you want to uh, bring them back into the family family spirit by sharing something about. Uh, people who are uh, recently deceased. Right. I don't know. Uh, but they were really into ghost stories. Uh, so we do have a ghost story uh, telling event inside the parlor. Um, and it's actually done by myself. And uh, I last year I did, uh, it was the first time we did this, and I made a, a cranky, and I don't know if you know what a cranky no. is. Uh, well, it's a, like a moving panorama. Uh, so oh. it's, um, uh, you crank the box, and you can't see what I'm doing, but I'm moving my hand. Uh, moving my hand uh, around, but it's like a roll of paper that yeah. scrolls across, and you watch the story like a, it's like an illustration, like a moving book. Yes, yeah. Uh, and I read the story at the same time. You know where um, the greatest showman on earth, the movie uh, with uh, oh, uh, Hugh, Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman. Yep. There's a scene in the movie where he brings home a cranky for oh. his daughter. So if you don't know what we're talking about, <laughs> there you go. Up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so I do one of the stories uh, with the cranky. Um, I'm not the greatest illustrator, but um, I do uh, like to uh, play with play with it, and uh, I think it's a lot of fun, and um, people enjoy it. So um, that's a fun event coming up on the 13th and 14th. Okay. And then uh, the next weekend, we have a couple of different things. Um, 
uh, Simpsons Folly is coming to do uh, an evening of music. So they do uh, Red River Settlement, uh, Scottish, Irish, Welsh, English uh folk tunes. And so they made a festive repertoire for us on uh, the 20th of December. And uh, that is um, paired with, it's called a Chris, uh, Christmas Days of Yore. And um, we have a surprise visit from Scrooge coming oh. on that particular day with a comic retelling of a Christmas carol. Um, and then the following day, we have Ron Robinson doing his traditional reading of nice. Christmas Carol, which is part of uh, some family's traditions. And um, that is happening in our visitor center. And then the next day, we have a very special uh, reading with Ron Robinson of A Christmas Carol, but it's in the parlor. So that's a little bit more expensive, but you get um, the full Victorian yes. uh, feel. Nice. Oh, it sounds all so lovely. <laughs> yes. Um, Charlene, you've been with us a few times here on the air, and I've always wanted to ask you, what is your love of the Victorian era? Like, you, There must be a connection for you to have been with this organization for as many as years as you have. And, I, you know, we can tell when you talk about it, your eyes are twinkling, and this is something near and dear to your heart. So what is that connection for you? Oh, well, the thing that I love, about it is that um, the Victorians, because it was part of the Industrial Revolution, there was so much that they gave us. Uh, so um, all the inventions, um, science colliding with um, spirituality, um, it just offers a, such a like a plethora of of, um, of things to mine from. Um, all the 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 ghost stories. There was so many. Um, there was the spiritualist movement, and there was the all the inventions that happened, and all of the medicine. Like this, um, there's just so much that they right. they have offered us um, in terms of invention, whether it was good or bad, or <laughs> or um, it didn't work out. But there was there was just so much going on, and um, it was really to uh, when um, childhood became a thing because. Um, with mass marketing or with mass production, they created um, toys. And so middle class could af afford more toys for their kids. Mm. And then like kids could be kids for longer. Right. Uh, but there were still kids working in, in factories. factories. So there was this um, juxtaposition of, of so many lives colliding that it's a, a, a kind of feels like a big bang of of um, of, of, our, of our world that we sort of know today. Right, um, right. Kind of having birth at that point. So That's there's a very just a lot point. going on. Yeah. Okay, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so how can people get a hold of you and how can they get tickets? Well, uh, you can get tickets online. Um, you can go to our website, find the event that you want, and uh, get tickets there. Or uh, Eventbrite uh, has them, but our, our um Website is www.downrootmuseum.ca, uh, or you can phone. Uh, we are open today uh, through Sunday, 12 to 4. The phone number is 204-943-2835, and uh, you can get tickets uh, that way as well. Or you can go straight to the house. That's 61 right. 61 Carlton Street. Uh, and for a visit. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, Charlene, thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to come and talk to us and tell us about all the great activities happening. And uh, if anyone out there listening does go, uh, email us or tell us what you thought. Uh, you can email us at info at classic107.com or you can post on our social media, whether it's our Facebook page or you can tweet at us and tell us why you love Dalbert Museum over the holidays. We'd love to hear from you. Charlene, thank you. Have a very Merry Christmas. Good luck with everything happening over the holidays at Dalnavert, and we'll see you there over the month. I hope so. Thank you so much, and Merry Christmas.